Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host, Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience, and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their insights. If you would like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review, as it will help others to learn about autism stories. On today's episode, Rebecca Cavender returns to Autism Stories to discuss snake medicine and how autistic people can draw strength and wisdom from this on their journey to self-discovery and personal growth. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Rebecca, thanks so much for making your return here on Autism Stories. Thank you for having me, Doug. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And I wanted to invite you back because I recently saw that you are a snake priestess and I was intrigued. (laughs) My, My immediate thought is what the heck is a snake priestess? So can you give us a little introduction on what that is? Yeah, I'm sure that's a, probably a really good question to ask. What is that? For me, what a snake priestess means is it's, it's a particular type of priestessing that a lot of people are hearing about that now. Priestessing is pretty open in the world. A lot of it's actually almost, in some ways, almost kind of trendy. You're hearing it a lot. But what feels true to me is that snake priestessing has like a specific medicine and it doesn't mean it's like the worshiping of snakes, but what it does mean is that there's a reverence towards what snake holds and what it teaches us. And that is those of the feminine and the masculine on the planet. You can see it in the old caves from prehistoric times. And so for me, the snake priestess is one who remembers this really ancient wisdom that particular to the cycles of the creation, dissolution, and regeneration, which could be looked at as like the cycles of life, death, and rebirth, but one that really homes her practices and her life is really in devotion and service to those kind of mysteries kind of catonic it's is deep i read that snake medicine's been coming to you for 12 years now what was the origin of that experience for you yeah uh, the origin was really it started happening in dreams where i started having a lot of really powerful dreams with snakes and it was during a time when I was I was in an abusive marriage and I was really trying to find the courage to honor my marriage (laughs) but emotional this hour I felt like I was gaining the strength to make that break and and I started having so many dreams with snake and it really in reflection. Now I can really see that the, and because I'm seeing this pattern with a lot of women, a lot of women get kind of initiated through dreams with snake medicine as well, or it reawakens their power to really get them out of a situation or wake them up into something, whether it's their power. Well, it's usually their power, whether it's their inner power or their sexual power or their sovereignty in some way. And snake is quite a jarring symbol for a lot of us. And a lot of us are, you know, a lot of people are afraid of snakes. So to have lots of snaky dreams, it's like you're getting some kind of message. And for me, that was what the beginning was, you know. And it's continued. (laughs) (laughs) So from my limited understanding with snake medicine, it's important to know about the snake goddess and her story as well. 
What's her story and how does it mm. impact feminine wisdom to this day? So many stories about the snake goddess, really. It's difficult to choose just one because almost every culture across the globe has creation stories or myths around the snake goddess or the snake bird symbol of the goddess for human civilization, like across the globe. And then, of course, she's been morphed into, you know, being more evil or, you know, with kind of Adam and Eve stories and Medusa and things like that. She really got turned on her head. But her story is one of being like our original mother, our, the original goddess, the one that holds the deepest rooted wisdom of our humanity and the one who really evokes balance in the world and balance between the masculine and the feminine or balance between our spirit and our humanity and especially really a time before this structure of dominance in our human cultures where there was more harmony and we didn't have all of these isms in the world and the patriarchy hasn't come in and kind of put a massive domination on top of of the world where we felt interconnected to all of life and to one another and our bodies and we she really evokes this part of us where we don't need an intermediary to connect us to what we know is true. And I think especially for women, if you are connected to your body, then you're connected to the earth. <laughs> you're connected to nature. And because as women, our bodies are very cyclical and very connected to nature. And so if you have a system of oppression or dominance that comes in and tries to separate you from your body or feel like your sexuality or your body is shameful, then you can start to have all types of dominance come in and structures. And this isn't just for women, but for everyone. That's really the minute you make this break between feeling what's true inside of yourself and your connection to all of life, then anyone can start to tell you things and have some kind of control. And so she really, the snake goddess really is here to help us be in our own as someone that has reverence for all of life of separation, which I think people, we feel that wounding of separation really deeply we can feel othered and different and so on. And all of the ways I feel like she comes in to try to heal that. Hearing you talk about this makes me think about how as autistic people, a lot of times we don't trust our instincts. And I'm wondering if snake medicine is, is a helpful way to kind of like reconnect with our instincts, which I think for a lot of us are, are really good. I totally agree with you, like 100%. I think our instincts are really, really good and that we're very aware and very sensitive to our surroundings. And that's why, you know, if you think about snake, even biologically, snake is has to be so attuned to the nature and the environment around it. And I mean, it's slithering around on its belly and so can feel every, you know, single bump in the ground and the snake can be aware of, I can't remember quite how many feet away in distance, but quite far can feel hoof prints starting to come on the ground and like that reverberation of that energy on its body or somebody's footprint or yeah, hoof prints or footprints. Some snakes, they can feel the upcoming of a earthquake. I was reading this amazing book called awakening the ancient wisdom of the snake and it had a lot of 
biology and science in it. And, it. and one of the stories, though, was someone who had a snake in San Francisco and about just being upright in the tank in it. And the people who had the snake thought, this is really weird. I've never seen my snake like this. But the snake just kept being erect in the tank. And then the next day there was an earthquake. And then that's happened subsequent times. So snakes are so instinctual. I mean, all animals are, but snakes, I mean, we have to do, they're elegant and magnificent. They know when to take time for themselves. They're not pack animals. So I think as autistic people, <laughs> we could probably identify with them too. Like, you know, we're very instinctive and we are very, a lot of us feel the environment around us acutely, <laughs> highly acutely, which the snake knows when to retreat and like have time alone and need to before it sheds for example it will not want to be touched it will want people we can like completely relate to this process of what snake goes through and who snake is and and can learn to like sometimes we are very with our sensitivities and our instincts we can feel that they're very overwhelming but I feel like snake can teach us how to move with those in a way that supports our body and our nervous system as opposed to being so overwhelming with them no yeah snake medicine is math for autistic in regards to your experience with uh, snake medicine you've become a priestess and ordained by the 13 Moon Mystery School. What are some of the guiding principles of snake medicine you've learned from this school? Yeah, well, actually, yeah, I've been studying with the 13 Moon Mystery School for probably a decade and just a little bit under that and then was ordained a couple of years ago. And it was actually the 13 Moon Mystery School is it's a mystery school, but it's really archetypal. And so it's really about having direct consciousness or direct contact with, it's about having direct contact with archetypal consciousness and learning skills to hone those and to be present for the purpose of being in service to others and particularly to be loving. So from the perspective of snake medicine through the 13 Moon Mystery School, I feel like there's, we study 13 divine feminine archetypes. I feel that there are five different divine feminine archetypes that weave together that hold snake medicine. And so, again, that's just from the 13 Moon Mystery School lens, that would be the great mother, the creator, destroyer, preserver, who, and, a, you know, like Kali is kind of an example of that archetype. The primal goddess, the medicine woman, the wise woman, and then like the death mother or the, the queen of death. I feel like those five archetypes are sisters that weave together to move the medicine of snake. And for me, while Snake came to me before I was connected to the 13 Moon Mystery School, I think it also helped lead me to the 13 Moon Mystery School. And it's in that deepening in the 13 Moon Mystery School, and particularly even with my initiation or my initiations and my ordination, that Snake Medicine became more and more and more powerful. And it became clear that this was what I was meant to be, the energy I was meant to be working with. Yeah, and so I do hold like a snake priestess temple inside the 13 Moon Mystery School lineage. And I feel that too, that snake medicine and snake priestessing isn't just 13 Moon Mystery School work at all. It's global. It's as I said, snake is an 
symbol that is across literally every continent, well, probably except Antarctica, <laughs> so wherever there's snakes, it's in every single culture and mythology. And so it's a very diverse global thing that's very, I would feel more, the distinction for me feels is much more animist. Yeah. Probably more indigenous for a lot of people. Something else you've done not long ago, and I wanted to ask you about, because we've had many uh, business owners and entrepreneurs here on Autism Stories. You've created a self-study course relating to an animist approach to business. How might this approach differ from maybe traditional, and may I say even boring, business courses, <laughs> structures, or formulas? <laughs> yeah, I don't think this was very boring. It's different what it is. So animism, for anybody who's not sure, is really just the belief that everything is alive and everything has a spirit. And the truth is every single one of us have ancestors who are animists. <laughs> so all of us come from some kind of animist worldview. Some of our ancestors or some of us still hold that and others were more separated from that view. The, the course about animism with business is about feeling that your business, since everything is alive and everything has a spirit, that your business as well is something that is alive and has its own consciousness and that you are a steward of that business as opposed to an owner. And again, this is the same theme with snake medicine and animism of like where this hierarchy or dominance of control of ownership, these are dispelled into more of a horizontal webby perspective and interconnection and so it's about instead of oh this is my business and I own it and of course like there's legal things that we go through that those things are all real and true but that from a but when you can connect to this idea that your the business that you're stewarding is a relationship and has its own consciousness then you can move into this space and connect to that and glean wisdom and be in partnership and relationship with your business, which actually may creates a much more dynamic experience with your business. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more easeful because you are you are just being able to be in relationship and get guidance about, well, from very practical things like, oh, I'm thinking about such and such project. Is this really aligned? Is this really worthy of my time right now? And you can kind of feel into the spirit of the business and see if it is or not. Or if it is, then actually you can get guidance quickly. Like, well, this might be the title of the program. This might be a good time to launch it. Here are some people who would be the best suited for this work. You could even get copy like that. This is what happens for me anyway. I kind of go into a meditative state to connect to that, and then I can easily get information. So much nicer than having to just hash it out in your brain over and over and over and over. And, of course, you might need to do some refining, but... There's a lot of wisdom that's there. And yeah, so it's a very different approach. And again, it's rooted in this place of like, I am in relationship. I am stewarding this thing that has its own consciousness. And this is just a worldview that changes. It's completely opposing to how most of us live in the world <laughs> and are taught, especially in our Western cultures. Well, I identify with what you were just talking about, and I'm sure some of our listeners do um, as autistic entrepreneurs or business owners. The idea, the word owner has always felt kind of icky to me, and it's never yeah. really, I've never really identified with that. I feel much more towards stewardship and those types of, of things and 
So I might have to take this self-study course. I'm definitely going to look into <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, it, go, it goes through this little process of, you know, how to connect to that. And again, for some people who are thinking, oh, that sounds a little too woo-woo or what do you mean? You, what do you mean? I meditate into the spirit of the business. Well, I mean... You can think of, if that feels too abstract, you can also think of it as, well, you're listening to your own inner wisdom. Then whatever the source of that is, it really doesn't matter, I don't think, but it gives you a structure to listen and to trust the instincts that come through and to do this in a really easeful way where you kind of get out of your head and then the information just can come through you in more of a flow state that's another way to look at (laughs) if if what i'm sharing feels a little bit too edgy for some they're both true you know both of these kind of perspectives are true but yeah it's powerful and it's made a massive difference for me and i often guide people one-on-one on how to do that as well how to connect first but I think for autistic people it would be very easy to do and like a really natural process on March 1st you're having a free snake medicine convergence can you tell our listeners a little bit about that and how else they can learn more about what you do beyond uh, this interview yeah On March 1st, there's this beautiful convergence of people from across the globe. There's there's psychologists, there's artists, there's musicians, there's healers, there's authors, there's people from totally diverse, different backgrounds, but they all hold snake medicine. And I've just felt really called to bring people together and for us to have this conversation together. So it imagine kind of sitting by the fire how i hope it feels is that they're passionate talking about snake med life about death about sex about uh, connecting to nature to be a free flow conversation that people get to listen to and be part of and hear and learn different perspectives about this medicine and as we as practitioners of it get to share with each other. And I don't think anything like this has ever happened that I am aware of. There hasn't been a gathering like this. And so I think it's going to be super fun. I'm very excited. And yeah, and then people can just look at my website or my Instagram and learn more about me there, which I'm sure you'll just share those links and my website is just my name, so it's easy. It's just RebeccaCavender.com. And then you can find me on Instagram by my name as well. Also, yeah, I'm happy to connect with anybody. Well, I, I'm a big follower of your um, Instagram account, Rebecca. And, um, you know, thanks so much for uh, returning here on Autism Stories. I always love the uh, conversations we had. Oh, thank you so much. It's so sweet. I was really happy to be here. (laughs) Thank you for inviting me back. We always love hearing from you and would especially love to hear from you relating to this episode on what animal do you most identify with? Thanks so much to Rebecca for the conversation. And to learn more about Rebecca and snake medicine, please check out the links in the podcast description for this episode. Here at Autism Personal Coach, our clients are the experts, our coaches are the guides. The majority of supports for autistics are not helpful. They try to fix us, not support us. That's why many are confused when we say our clients are the experts, experts of their lived experience. Our clients are the experts for what has worked for them and about the things they need and want in their lives. Our coaches first listen to our clients, then ask thoughtful questions, offer resources, and strategize with our clients so they can get what they need to thrive. Would you want a guide in your life to coach you to get you the things you desire? If so, then visit AutismPersonalCoach.com for more information. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories, and if you did, if you can tell a friend foe or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable and educational experience as you when listening to autism stories would be very much appreciated 
Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.